This video is sponsored by Fully Automated. Has this ever happened to you? Last night you showered, maybe you were a bit too high, and you wondered how elements of the universe are made. So you went to Wikipedia, opened up the page about stellar nucleosynthesis. Now you have 200 new tabs open, mixed into the 300 tabs you already had open. Scrolling through all of these tabs used to be hard work, but not anymore. Introducing the web tuner. Like an old radio has a tuning knob with which you can select from radio channels, with the web tuner you can select the right web page. Web tuner. Hardware for the hardcore hacker. At the beginning, this was just a silly idea, which turned into an experiment. We wanted to see how hard would it be to get custom hardware data into a web browser. It took us a few hours and it was great fun. But at the end, the web tuner turned out to be actually useful. Just consider the following situation. You're working on something, coding or drawing, cutting silly videos. You have two monitors. On one screen is the application you're using, and the other one has a browser with documentation, references, and all that web stuff. With the web tuner, you can switch between your tabs without your application losing focus. Let's say you're programming and you have to look at an API reference, specifications, and some example code, all of which are open in different tabs. Because the web tuner is talking directly to the web browser, the web tuner lets you change tabs even when the browser is in the background. Would you like to build one? We share this code and models on GitHub. Link is in the description. A rotary encoder, an Arduino, some cables, plastic for a knob and a housing, and a 3D printer. I created a knob and a housing that fits my ThinkPad in OpenSCAD and I wrote the firmware. Ellen worked on the extension. I'm using the encoder and debouncer libraries, which we have to install. You can check the functioning with the serial monitor. How does this work? You have this manifest file which ha every extension has and here you get the permission native messaging um, and you have this pipotty JSON. It must be called pipotty. So the name must match the file name on Linux. On Windows, it must match the name of the registry key you create that contains the location of the native messaging manifest. We got this no such native application error. And the problem was that it was not located in the correct path. Um, it must go to home slash dot mozilla slash native messaging host. This is a Python script that's executed by Firefox and it communicates to your Firefox um, extension, which is in JavaScript, this background GS over Unix socket. You create a port, browser runtime connect native pipothy. This is the name you specified in the manifest file. And then there's this listener, and I wrote this part. She's awesome, by the way. So what's in the Python script? It's very simple. It's just 27 lines. Opens the serial connection. Every time it gets a line, 
separated with the new line characters. It calls the send message function that encodes into JSON. Web tuner. Coming to hackerspace near you.